There's no shortage of weird and unconventional tank designs. Sometimes engineers have too much time on their hands. And sometimes higher-ups have them push the envelope just a bit too far. Nowhere did the latter happen more than during the early Cold War, where armor technology was rapidly changing. Coincidentally, nuclear technology was also rapidly evolving during this time. Nuclear power was all the rage. They wanted to put it in cars, trains, rocket engines, you name it. So it should go without saying that the concept of a nuclear power tank was seriously considered. It all started in 1953, with the inception of the US Army's Astron program. It was found that whenever the Army created a list of specifications for a new tank, these severely limited the number of new and promising concepts the companies could apply. To avoid this, the US Army asked companies for proposals for what they called an X-Weapon, a medium tank with only one specification, a production date of 1958 at the latest. Proposals were submitted by General Motors, Chrysler, and Detroit Arsenal's OTAC. Chrysler had to withdraw. Chrysler wasn't entirely out of the fight, though. After May of 1955, when the primary Astron proposals were shown off, Chrysler submitted their own separate proposal directly to the Army. Looking more like a well-fed tank than a tank, this highly unusual concept was dubbed the TV-8. Along with the crew, almost all of the components were located in the turret. The only components not housed in the turret were the fuel tanks and motors. As can be seen in this diagram, the turret had two layers. The inner layer was the actual turret itself. It was constructed out of steeply angled steel plates. The second layer had a large volume of air, followed by a light metal outer skin. This provided the 25-ton tank with enough displacement that it could float in water. For propulsion, there was a water jet pump in the turret rear. It was also hoped that the outer turret layer would detonate shaped charges, allowing the air trapped within to make the molten copper jet ineffective. So not only did the outer layer provide buoyancy, it could also act as spaced armor. Much like the T-95, the TV-8 was to be armed with a smoothbore T-208 90mm gun, which was seen as the future of tank weaponry. While they were partially correct in that smoothbores were the future, the T-208 was not very good. Penetration wasn't astounding for its time, and the gun had horrible dispersion. On the TV-8, the gun would have had a ramming assist mechanism. Ammunition was kept in a separate compartment, separated from the crew by a steel bulkhead. And speaking of the crew, they would have been seated on either side of the gun. The driver and gunner were located in the front with the driver on the left and the gunner on the right. The commander sat behind the gunner, while the loader sat behind the driver. The crew could operate with hatches open, but since they were playing for hazardous environments, special provisions were made. Provision while buttoned up, the crew would use closed-circuit television. Despite what you might think, this wasn't an entirely novel concept, as the US tested TV piloted drones during World War II. On the original concept, the TV was powered by a conventional 300 horsepower engine. Later in the TV's development cycle, three more power plant designs were proposed. These included a gas turbine, hydrocarbon vapor cycle power plant, and finally, a vapor cycle power plant powered by nuclear fuel. In the case of the last, it was kind of like a miniature nuclear reactor. The nuclear fuel would be used to generate steam, where it would then turn a turbine and produce electricity. This would have given the TVA incredible range. On a similar concept, its range was estimated at 4,000 miles. For context, most tanks of that time were lucky if they could reach 100. Of course, when you're working with anything nuclear, there is a lot of risk. In late 1955, the Nuclear Development Corporation was contracted to study how nuclear power could be applied to various vehicles. During a meeting on this study, the briefing officer pointed out that a nuclear tank would be excessively heavy, the reactor would be difficult to install and protect, and that the risk of radiation was far too great. Striking the reactor wouldn't create a nuclear explosion, but it might create a steam explosion. Not that it would be much less devastating. The explosion would spread a ton of radiation, and steam explosions could be quite intense. The TV was also very unbalanced, with the turret weighing 15 tons out of 25. This would make it incredibly easy to tip. I can only imagine what they would be like on icy roads. If the crew were constantly exposed to radiation while inside the TV-8, crews would have to be rotated often, so you're looking at a serious lack of experience for anyone operating the thing. Thankfully, the army realized the TV-8 was a terrible proposal. Only a wooden mock-up was made. I've seen people claiming a prototype was made, but that's not true. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is on it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.